At the Invictus Games, displays of courage and perseverance are everywhere you look. What they are proving to the rest of the world is that whatever you come up against, whether it's physical or mental trauma, that you can actually get through it. Invictus, are you ready? It's a message Prince Harry hopes everyone will hear as he cheers on sick and wounded servicemen and women as they compete, like Joel Rodriguez, a retired U.S. Army Staff Sergeant. When you had your accident, a lot of people would have thought these are the cards I'm dealt and maybe, maybe have taken it kind of slowly through life. You did the total opposite, man. You said cards, and that's funny because when my wife came to see me, probably a day after my surgery, She's like, are you okay? I said, well, these are the cards I have, so I have to play them. <laughs> and I said, so I'm just going to do what I can to be the best person I can in this situation. And I'm still doing it. That's all we can do. Joel is one of hundreds of athletes from around the world empowered by the games, all supporting each other. There was one woman who came up to me yesterday, and she said something that totally struck me in my soul. She said, the Invictus Games saved my life. How does that land for you? It feels amazing, but every, every single games that I go to, I hear the same thing from so many of them. And that, it feels amazing that we've managed to play a part in their recovery, but it also makes me incredibly sad to know that that's how dark it was for them. You've spoken about, obviously, mental health issues. When you put that heavy backpack down, like people are lugging stuff around, when you finally put it down, do you feel yourself like peaceful? Yeah, or I think at I ease? think I think everyone ends up feeling lighter. I think is the best way to describe it. For so many people, it's about management. Mm -hmm. You know the things that trigger you, therefore you try and stay away from that. But what I do know is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel for absolutely everyone. Everybody. I don't know if you feel the same way. The only thing I want in my life is to feel like peaceful. You've lived in in the United States for for two years. Two years already. Yeah. Do you feel peaceful? now? I don't know how many people feel truly peaceful, yeah. you know? I feel, at times I feel massively at peace, but with everything that's going on in the world and trying to help and trying to use yeah. the platform and the influence to try and steer people mm -hmm. to trying to help and, again, like, I think the, the biggest concern or the biggest issue that people wrestle with on a daily basis that does provide more anxiety for me and for them is the helplessness. We as human beings are compassionate people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when your life becomes really hard, mm -hmm. it can be, for some, harder to find the compassion for other people. Yeah. But what I've learned over the years is, certainly for myself, I find healing in helping others. Hmm. And I think that's, a, that's what we should really be focusing on. I love on. that. You know, I feel like life happens on a random Wednesday. Like, here's an example. Some people say, oh my God, I'm going to go on a vacation. My life's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. And it's like exclamation points. The vacation, the graduation, the marriage, the baby, those are yeah. all up here. The other exclamation marks are down here. It's like sad things that happen, loss, divorce, whatever. Most of life is Wednesday. Yeah. It doesn't have the highs and it doesn't have the lows. It's just Wednesday. What's a Wednesday like for you, Random? What's a Wednesday like? Um, like it, it, it revolves around the kids as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Like this whole working from home stuff is, mm -hmm. is, is not all it's cracked up to be, um, certainly post-COVID, because it's really hard when your kids and you are in the same place. It's yeah. really hard to separate the work from, from them because they kind of overlap. So, I mean, Archie spends more time interrupting our Zoom calls Does he? Um, than anybody else. Um, Does he have your personality? But he also gets us off them as well, so that's also, yeah. also a nice thing. Is he kind of like you? He's got a little bit of the, your thing? What's my, what's <laughs> you know, my your, thing? your cheeky thing, my that cheeky thing you thing. do? Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah. He's, um, yeah. Look, I always try and keep that. I think that, you know, the cheekiness is something that keeps you alive. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, there's, there's, just, there's so much to be happy about in the outside world, but there's also so much to worry about. Mm -hmm. My sort of mantra now every day is... And it's, it's, it's a dangerous one because mm. I need to make sure that I don't have burnout, but it's trying to make the world a better place for my kids. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point in bringing kids into this world, right? It's a, it's a responsibility that I feel as a parent that you probably feel as a I parent do. as well. And, it's, and we can't fix everything. We know that. Yeah. But what we can do is be there for each other. You obviously made a lot of news recently. You came home to the UK. You saw your grandmother. How was that? It was great. It was really nice to see her. Be able to see her in some element of privacy was... Was, was nice. I haven't had a chance to go back to the UK uh, for a couple of years, apart from those two times, one to, 
one for my grandfather's funeral and one for unveiling a statue of my mum. How did it feel being back? Um, being with her? Being with her, it was great. It was, it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on, she's on great form. We always, she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me, and I'm just making sure that she's, you know, protected and got the, the right people around. Well, her. You, you make her laugh. That's what she always says. Uh, I, did you do it again? Uh, yes, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, both cool. Megan and I had tea with her, so it was, it was really nice to catch up with her. And you know, home, home for me now is, is, is you know, for the time being, it's in, it's in, the, it's in it's the, the states, states. and it really, and it feels that way as well. Does um, it? Yeah. It's, We've been welcomed with open arms, yeah. um, and it's got such a great community up in Santa Barbara. So, so you feel like good. that's home more for you? Yeah. Is that weird to say? No, but I'm sure it'll become a thing. Your grandmother's going to be 96. Yeah. What's the best thing about her? It's her sense of humor yeah. and her ability to see the, the humor in so many, so many mm -hmm. different things. We, we have a really special relationship. We talk about things that she can't talk about with anybody else. That. Um, so that's always a, a nice piece to it. But I think she's, I think after a certain age, you get bored of birthdays. You do? You think she's bored of her 96? She won't so. be bored of the Jubilee, will she? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> she's, had a, she's had a few Jubilees now, so every, everyone's slightly, yeah. every, everyone is slightly different. But yeah. I think she, I'm sure she's looking Do you think to you'll it. come? I don't know yet. There's lots of things with security uh, issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do, trying to make it possible that, you know, that I can get my kids to meet her. March marked two years since Harry stepped back as a senior royal. Your family uh, at home, do you miss them? Um, yes, I think, especially over the last two years, for most people, have they not missed their family, right? The inability to be able to get home yeah. and see them. Of course, that's a, yeah, that's a huge part of it. But do you miss your brother, your dad? Look, I mean, I'm, for me, at the moment, I'm here yeah. focused on these guys yeah. and these families and giving everything I can, 120% to them, mm -hmm. to make sure that they have the experience of a lifetime. Yeah. That's my focus here, and then when I leave here, I get back and my focus is my family, who I miss massively. You do, I <laughs> yeah. bet. But of course I do, they're two, two little people, you know. I was thinking about awesome. a new life, like you got a, a whole restart. Mm -hmm. You have a whole new focus, a whole new nucleus. How does that land with you? No, I think the focus is very much the same. Right? Is it? Yeah, oh. certainly from, from, from my yeah. own, my wife's point of view, yeah. for the two of us, you know, this was a life that she signed up for mm -hmm. and that we were committed to doing together as a couple mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. um, because of the circumstances, we've now m moved that life of service to the States and we'll continue mm -hmm. to do what we were doing before. So in that regard, nothing's changed for us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more complicated to yeah. have to sort of restart. Sure. If you know what, I mean. what do you love about fatherhood? Oh, what I love about fatherhood? Yeah. All of it. The chaos, the learning, the reminder of just every element of yourself, your soul, right? Just it, oh. when you're not a parent, you can get sucked into all sorts of different yeah. stuff. And you maybe sometimes forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And suddenly as a parent, especially now Archie at the age that he's at, asking all the questions. What does he ask? Questions. It just, those questions of the why. Yeah. He's into the why stage. Yeah, yeah. Why this, why that, why that? Uh -huh. And instead of just trying to, like, I don't know, move it on, I give him the most honest answer that I can, mm -hmm. and then it goes on and on and on until he's satisfied, and then <laughs> that's it, it's done. Yeah. Otherwise it ends up with, because the world is round and that's the way that so life is. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like, I love it. I, I love every, every part of it. I've always mm -hmm. wanted to be a dad. I've always mm. wanted to have my own kids, and now I've got mm. two little people who I'm responsible for. You know? Do you tell them, or do you tell Archie, since he's old enough, about your mom? Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. I don't tell him all the stuff that happened, but you... certainly that this is, you know, Grandma Diana, and we've got a couple of photos up in the house. In these moments, do you ever feel your mom's presence? Yeah, yeah no, um, for me, um, it's constant. It has been over the last two years more so than ever before. Hmm. Um, it's almost as though she's done her done her bit with my with my brother and now she's very much like helping me. He got got him set up, now she's helping me set up. That's what <laughs> it feels like, you know. Um, he's got he's got his kids, I've got my kids. You know, the circumstances are obviously different, but no, she I I feel her presence in almost everything that I do now. <laughs> um, but definitely more so in the last two years than ever before, without question. So She's, she's watching over us. I'm sure she's proud of you. <laughs> I'm sure she is. Prince Harry carrying on his mother's commitment to making the world a better place as he honors those who triumph.
to be able to see Joel and his family just <laughs> flourish in moments like this, it means everything. But it comes back to the very simple thing, which is this, the power of sport. Mm. You know, not just physical, but the, the mental rehabilitation that it takes is, is phenomenal. But none of it would be possible without the mindset. They are proving that the impossible is entirely possible, mainly with, with, the, with the strength of a mindset saying, I can achieve anything. I've done this before. I'm going to do it again. Um, you know, his uh, his wife was with him, yeah. and he, it's funny, he said every time the athletes saw him, they were like, where's Megan? Where's Megan? Where's <laughs> Megan? He was like, who am I? By the time we had gotten there, she was on a plane home, yeah. but uh, that was also the focus. But those games, I have to say, mean the world to him. You can he, see that. He came from opening ceremony. He's going to be there for closing. He even said he was nervous about, like, what do I say at the end? He said, I'm still trying to work it out. What a fascinating conversation. I could listen all day to that. It's interesting, like, what he said and what he didn't say. That's what I was thinking, because it's obviously... The there are m many issues with the family, and he was willing to share some of those issues, and a lot of it he was kind of keeping close to him. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, I think, left to unpack, and it'll, yeah. It was interesting to also hear him say that, that yeah. his home is here. Yeah. For the time being. Yeah. That was that was interesting. Yeah, but I think he underscored it, and he himself said, I know this is going to be a big deal mm. when I say this. Yeah. Like, this is home. He spent his whole life in London, yeah. obviously in England, and I think he knew he was going to make, he basically said to me, like, I'm going to make news on that. Yeah. yeah. Like, that That's was going to make was, a splash. That was going to make a pond. splash, yeah. 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 But, but by the way, he was delightful, and he was lighthearted, and he had a just... just well, a, so were you, by the way. Yeah. It was just a, a fantastic was, wide range of... You know, of that'd make a good Making Space podcast. Oh, you put the whole thing on there. There so you we go. Can listen, because I'd like to listen to there's the whole. There's more. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Okay. All right. Yeah. Actually, Thanks we're going to see Jake. more of it. Oh, yeah. In the next few hours. Yeah, we're going to have some at 9, and we're going to have some at 10 o'clock. We're going to talk more about Joel and some of the other athletes oh. who, by the way, one guy walked up to me. He had just won a gold medal, and they give them tulips when they when they win. He walked up to me. He said, I just want to give you these. I said, why? He said, oh, oh, just because I literally carried them all the way home in a Dixie cup oh. because that's how meaningful that that is. They're giving things to anybody who walks up. It was oh. it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We'll have uh, more of that on where today all day. Today, today all day. day. Nobody knows. It's everywhere. Today. Oh, the yeah. extended Eastern. interview, yeah. noon, yeah. six o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Put it on your podcast. Yeah. Okay. You. you got okay. it. I will. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.